Hi guys, this is Christoph with Click. Some people claim that my entire household is totally Click branded. Well, that's a rumor. Let's today have a look together into Click's integration possibilities with Python. Let's first look at the front end integration. In order for this to work, I've got Python installed on my machine. I'll start a command prompt and I can set my working directory accordingly. I don't want to claim this for myself. This is really great work done by Riley McDonald, my colleague. And let's start the extension service. This is using a service on, on the given port and waits for incoming gRPC calls. So why gRPC? gRPC is the protocol used by the server-side extension. Um, if you don't know what server-side extensions are, here is the link to check this out. I need to open your settings file in of ClickSense Desktop. You can find it in this place. And make sure you have this key SSR plugin equals. So at least what you needed to do here is put this into your ini file. Because I have other examples, I have a uh, semicolon se uh, separated list with some other options as well. And now we need to start or restart ClickSense Desktop. And now something is printed here in the Python console. It added the capability of linear regression. So now it's uh, registered as an external function. And as I log in now in ClickSense Desktop, I can go to the example and I can see the linear regression line calculated by Python. It's the red line here. If we quickly inspect what's happening there, basically a function called Python regression to be routed through the given Python endpoint and calling the function linear regression. It gives the sum sales to the Python code together with the dimensionality given here. In other words, for each year month combination, uh, it's sending a, a sum and it's receiving the linear regression for this. And of course, this is dynamic. So if I uh, change my selection and get a, a smaller part of it, it's making a different linear regression accordingly. This is real time. You can see that each time I change the selection, it prints that the function has been executed. So the other example of how this can work is through the script. Let's stop this one. Go to a different project. I mean, you could start them in parallel if you wanted and start the main code of it. It's similar as before, just a different port. It's waiting for the server side extension to register. And since it's ClickSense Desktop, it will not automatically do that. So I have to quit and restart ClickSense Desktop. And we can keep watching that window, what's going to happen as soon as ClickSense comes up. As soon as it comes up, it registers the new function. And this time I'll open another app. And this is the food analytics app. It's about sales in a retail shop um, with categories of products called departments here. Then we have uh, products and this translates into sales and we know from a shopping basket ID which products were bought together in one basket. Now I would like to apply a advanced algorithm that calculates which products are bought together. Of course, it would take much more time to explain how this has been done. But the essential parts are seen here in the script editor where I first load my data from 
flat files, in this case QVDs, my dimensions, my facts, which are the, the orders. And via that order ID, I can determine which products were bought together in a basket. So here, this part is about sending data to Python and loading the results. So it's sending three fields to Python, the order ID, the product ID and purchased, which has been prepared in memory before. Uh, and it will receive five columns back, which is again the product ID, the other product ID, support, confidence and lift. These are three scores that are private to the specific algorithm that we are calling. And if I execute the script, the first part is no miracle. It's just loading a lot of data. And now it's called the function and it's waiting for the result. Now it's Python's job to do something. So the script is holding here. Python is heating up my processors on my notebook. And in a little while, we will see results streamed back. So I've received back um, a couple of lines and this has become part of my data model. Let's quickly have a look. So this is where the result has been persisted. It is a new table that's hanging between the product ID and a new table called other product ID. And now you can do the detailed drills of that data set. So let's demonstrate this here. I do the product name, I do the other product name and and the confidence score. And as we do so, we can immediately see the products that are most confidently bought together. So it's a bag of organic bananas together with a uh, has avocado. Um, you can, of course, now see all scores greater than 0 0.3 with just a single click. And there you go. That are, in a nutshell, two modes of interacting with Python, the live mode and the script mode, both serving different use cases. So with that, come to an end of this video today. Hope you like it and if you do so, please subscribe to my channel. As I always love seeing new members joining the club. See you next time.